I am here now with the one and only Stephen King, the master of horror, here to tell us about his latest book, The Bazaar of Bad Dreams, a new collection of stories, many of which have never been published. I am beyond excited to be sitting with the master here because <laughs> you know, I mean, I've told you, I am. I won't say I'm your number one fan because we know how that goes in your stories, <laughs> but I am one of your biggest fans. So thank you for being here today. Well, well thank you for letting me scare the devil out of you. you Penny, Pennywise the clown, I'm never going to totally forgive you for that. Oh, uh, you know, the thing about Pennywise was I caught a whole generation with the miniseries, <laughs> which was ABC, and Tim Curry as Pennywise scarred a whole generation oh. of people, and I just love it. <laughs> I know, I told you once, you scared me and you said, good. Good, um, good. So this book is incredible. It's a series of short stories, and I love how you describe it. I mean, you're a novelist uh, by trade, but you say shorter stories can be invigorating, sometimes even shocking, like a waltz with a stranger you will never see again. Mm -hmm. What do yeah. you mean by that? Well, Edgar Allan Poe said the ideal short story, the writer writes it in one sitting, and the reader reads it in one sitting. And uh, I think that you take a sh piece of short fiction and you can concentrate things, emotions in there. Because I'm an emotional writer. My, my, I want to be confrontational. I want you to be mine <laughs> while I have that. So, <laughs> and uh, with a short story, it's like distilling everything into a, a really potent mix. And I love that. You have obviously so many classics, too many to name. I mean, The Shining, Oh, let's name Harry. them. Why not? I mean, we can. <laughs> we, right, we have so many of them. Why do you think your stories have stood the test of time? I mean, you can go back and reread or rewatch any of your stories, and you're captivated like the first time. Well, I think a lot of times uh, readers came to me when they were in their teens or their 20s, and uh, they, the books had a tendency to make an impression with them. And I think a lot of times uh, it was a question of, they got scared to death and then they wanted more so it's a little bit like the roller coaster and if they stand the test of time that's a great thing but it's not, not if they do no, they do and Amy. 11 22 63 my favorite book of all time just oh, want to say you. that okay so we, I, i've agreed to let you interview me we're going to do a little reverse interview here are you ready to be the interviewer i'm ready okay go for it how was the New York Marathon? I know you ran it. <laughs> it was awesome because I ran three miles of it, and that's uh -huh. it. So uh, I wasn't a full marathon. Okay. The B part of that question, did you get a blue blanket to put over your no, shoulders? No, I did not. I did not get a blue blanket because, you know, like I said, I was just, uh, I kind of cheated. Oh, well, three miles is three miles. Now, what scared you when you were a kid? Oh, you. Uh, <laughs> That would be the number one thing. Go me. <laughs> you definitely. What in particular scared you? Anything supernatural, and that's what you're good at. You're always putting the thought, because there are no locks for the devil or for the supernatural, and you knew that, right? I mean, you can lock out an axe murderer, maybe, but you can't lock out a car that eats you. You know, there's just, you had so many creative ways to scare us uh, that we couldn't protect ourselves from. Yeah. A lot of this stuff is uh, a time capsule thing where you read it in the daytime, and you say, okay, and then I get you at night yes. after you go to bed. Exactly, when I couldn't like put an appendage out of my uh, sheath because I was so afraid it'd be chopped off in the middle of the night. <laughs> Stephen King, thank you so Amy much. Amy Roback, thank you. <laughs> All right, The Bizarre of Bad Dreams is out tomorrow. It's incredible, you gotta pick one up.